In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Dear sisters, dear faithful, today's gospel reminds us of one of the most common faults committed by human beings, and that is the habit of excusing ourselves, which is very deeply rooted in wounded human nature. This is, of course, by no mere coincidence. Adam, our first parent, offered an invalid excuse to Almighty God as to why he had eaten of the forbidden fruit. And human beings have been excusing themselves invalidly for their faults ever since. Each of us entertains various rationalizations as to why we are prone to this or that sin or imperfection. Those around us make those sins and faults an inevitability, we tell ourselves. Children invent excuses for their disobedience and for their laziness. Husbands offer them to their wives, and vice versa. Employees weave them for their employers. Religious produce them readily for their superiors. But in all reality, those to whom we make an invalid excuse for our failings nearly always see right through it. Thousands of years have passed between our first parents and us, and yet very little has changed in this regard. Human beings go on making excuses. We are so very quick to excuse ourselves, even if that means shifting the blame to others who may not deserve it. When God questioned Adam in paradise, what hast thou done? His questions were, of course, rhetorical. God knew all there was to know about Adam's sin because of his omniscience. And God knows all there is to know about our own sins, failures, and shortcomings because of that very same omniscience. God sees right through the veneer of our pride, self-love, and sloth. We try to convince ourselves otherwise, but deep down we know this to be true. God sees right through our clever attempts to circumvent the order of legitimate authority. And he will hold us fully accountable for each of our sins and faults. That is something which we can count on for sure. We will answer to God for each and every sin and each and every fault that we have allowed to develop within our souls. This will include especially the failure to address those sins and faults to which we are so prone when we clearly know better. It will include the failure to uproot those sins and those faults from our souls 
and from our lives. Each of us has predominant faults, ones which should carry us to the confessional more so than others. So let us abandon once and for all the habit of making invalid excuses for those faults. Let us ask Almighty God always for the grace to understand those predominant faults, the grace to admit them both to ourselves and to our legitimate superiors in life. And finally, the grace to overcome those faults in all honesty and humility. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.